Okay. The sun is good? Is it good? Okay. So, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you to be here and to attend my second session this year. Thank you so much. So, my name is Yannick Ersalzedo. I'm French. Uh, the video shows my city of Nice, where I was last week. I'm a filmmaker developer since a long time ago. I'm a FBA partner. My company is Infographics. I'm a FBA partner. I'm a certified developer. I used to speak in many different conferences around the world, and it's my third DEF CON in a row. Um, I'm really into UI and design, and I'm proud to um, won the iPod Pro contest. Uh, FileMaker did a contest in last November, and I am the European winner. I think there's another American winner for my solution called Mobi Pharma. I will show you probably a few screens later on. So my topic, my topic today is to is the bring, iOS, uh, bring apps from FileMaker Go to something else, uh, probably the App Store. And the way I will explain things today, and we can do solutions, but we have to think about apps too and what are the differences between a solution, a FileMaker solution, and a FileMaker apps. For that, I will start uh, showing you a few projects I've worked on the last 12 months to explain uh, what I did. So, I have a short explanation. Yes. So, um, When the SDK was released uh, in the beginning of the year, I started uh, with a solution called GoTip. I used to present that solution for many conferences. This is an app made for calculating and sharing tips. This is now an app on the App Store. It's a free app made by, with FileMaker and only with FileMaker. So, sorry. Oh, what's happened? I have a bug? No. Let's start. Oh, there it is. So you enter any number, you can share by any number of person, and this is a 100% FileMaker apps. You can download it for free from the App Store now. Second thing I want to show you It's an app I released last week. It's a new version of something older. I use it for my session on Monday about the grid system. This is a paid app on the App Store. Um, it was accepted by Apple in two days because the process is really quick now. So I enter project. I enter window size. I enter the number column I need. This is for grid system. If you are aware about the grid system, it's really useful when you have a lot of different sizes uh, for layout, different device. And they give me, in, they give me the guides I need on my layout. And I can even tag what I like the most. Or I can or I can delete thing easily. Once again, it's 100% FileMaker. All the sliding you see, it's slide panel, our slide panel. And I explained this technique last year in the session in the same place called Advanced Popover and Advanced Slide Control. Um, since the beginning of FileMaker Go on the iPad and the iPhone. All, I'm a customer developer. I didn't explain that so much. All my projects are related to iOS devices. 
Even big business solution, part of the user are desktop, but I always, uh, my customer always need a remote connect uh, user with iPad or iPhone. And for the first time this year, I have a customer ask me for 100% iPad Pro solution. So I, I will show you something uh, later on. It's, it will be a solution on iPad Pro with FileMaker server, but all the users are connected with the iPad Pro to a server. So it's really important to understand that it's a market now. I don't know for you guys, but for me in France, for my company, iPad, iPhone are a huge deal. So I will show you a few things on my iPad mini. So there it is. So maybe you have, you have seen this solution. I made it for the DEF CON. I needed something to try uh, to show you how I work with responsive screens. So this solution was available in my repository. Probably you have downloaded it. So I needed something to know what happened next in the same room so you can navigate per date, per schedule. And when you click a specific event, you have the right venue. Okay, because this hotel is so huge, I never know where I am. So, thank you. Uh, it's a jQuery library, the map. I did the 3D things, but this is jQuery embedded in FileMaker. But the nice thing I want to show you is, with these devices, we can rot rotate the devices, okay? And with iOS 9, we have, iOS 9, sorry, we have new behavior like slide over. Let's say I open my Twitter. I expand to split view. And my FileMaker solution adapts, okay, to this new size. Okay, a sneak peek of the solution who won the contest. Moby Pharma. So this is a solution for sales team in the pharmaceutical industry. So this is the startup screen with the next appointment and where are these appointments? You have the main numbers of the period, a month, a quarter. You can once again rotate. This is the same layout, rotating, okay? And nothing move, I scroll my finger on that and the screen is still fixed. And this is a, basically a big CRM. And I can go to the account. I can, I click on the screen, nothing happened because I protect the data. If I want to edit data, I enter an edit mode with an on gesture tap. Um, to show you more the, what I call responsive, this is my charts. You see the free, the free widget on the right. When I rotate my screen, you have the widget on the bottom, right? You can do that with, on the same layout. Um, there's an app, there's a, a tutorial I give. You find the file, this file, you find this file in my example, in my repository called SEB13, it was slide the block method. You have to open this specific file into an iPad. You can open it in your FileMaker Pro and it's free to see under the hood how it works. I present 15 different patterns the way I do things on iPad. And uh, only 15 because you have the navigation bar on the bottom, on the right, or on the left. I never use on an iPad the navigation or the navigation on the top because it's not really user friendly. Okay, but I present solution where you, you can add a content on the left, on the right, on the bottom. And basically I embed element into a pattern. I will explain it later. Um, 
What can I show you? And this template will be an example. I will explain later on that the biggest issue when you, when you want to design something for iPad, uh, there are the sizes, so many different sizes. So I prepare a template for you. Um, the same template when you, with specific color to show how you change the layout when you change of size. If something changing into your device because of split view or slide over, okay? With a script, I'm going to another layout and to uh, emphasize that I change the color so you understand how it works. So this is uh, something I will give to you. And last thing, I hope I could do this. Okay, uh, as I said, uh, this is my first attempt to deliver an iPad Pro only solution for FileMaker Pro. This is a wedding planner company in France, uh, a big company uh, doing really high standard wedding. And this solution is iPad Pro only. And you have to deal to rotation, uh, you have to deal with all the points I mentioned earlier. And it's made to be really user friendly with your fingertip. So uh, you can see the proposal. This is just the first release of the device, of the solution, right? And I can expand my proposal, I kind of rose, you can expand or close, and it's easy to work on a really large proposal or large order on a small screen because I made the elements resizable. So th this is a sneak peek of this solution and I want to show you again the, my IMAP DEFCON solution on a really big screen. So this is the same solution. You can filter by uh, domain and once again you can resize because they are not the same sizes uh, between iPad Pro and iPad Mini. Okay, this is it for the showcase. Uh, okay, um, doing things for iPads and iPhone is not only a big deal for me. As uh, Dominic Goupil said during the opening keynote, more than one billion units um, of iOS devices have been sold from today. And Apple had, has announced at the beginning of the year that there are one billion active iOS devices running every day. Most of these iOS devices are iPhone, but a huge amount of iPad are running every day. So it's a huge opportunity of business for us, and more and more of these devices are uh, I knew in uh, company, small and bigger one. And with the release of the FileMaker iOS FDK, we have the opportunity to address this billion of potential users. So with the power we, ha we have, because FileMaker, we all know that it's really easy to use and we can develop a really uh, professional solution really fast. As I said, now in two days, your solution could be validate to be on the App Store. We have a great power, so we also have great responsibility. The responsibility to deliver a product with a quality as good as any other apps on the App Store, right? In terms of design, in terms of interaction, giving to the user the right size for the right devices. Uh, sadly, I'm I, I'm sharing a lot of with uh, developers all, all over the world, and some developers still thinking that they can take the desktop solution and bring this the same solution without any works to the iPad or the iPhone just because it works. Okay, you can do that. It will work, but it will work a really bad way. And from a UI point of view, from a user 
experience point of view is really not uh, an app, okay? So we have to build desktop so solution want, when you want to use it on laptop or desktop, but we, we have to work on the specific layout for specific devices. I try to focus on some major issues uh, we have when we have to deal with these devices. The first um, are the various sizes of these devices. As you know, FileMaker uh, Go, because every, app, every solution running FileMaker Go could go to the App Store, so I'm, that's why I'm talking about FileMaker Go. Uh, the apps after on the App Store I have the same requirement. Um, FileMaker Go could run from iOS, iPhone 4S with uh, free 20 points uh, with to the big iPad Pro, the 12 inches, okay? Many devices, many different sizes, but it's not the only problem. You also have to deal with the rotation. The same device can have can, uh, can has two different sizes at the same time, okay? You can stop that with a script, but if you script, if you stop this rotation by script, the user experience is not as good as your competitor. So you have to learn how to deal with that. Another variable is as I presented earlier, some new behaviors from iOS 9, the slide over and the split view. So this is the slide over and now the split view, okay? You have to be aware that you cannot uh, stop that with FileMaker Go. With FileMaker Go, it's always on. On, X on Xcode, if you are going to the store, with Xcode, you have a function called full screen, where you can get rid of these two behaviors. So you have, with these two uh, points, you have four more sizes. Don't forget that on some new device, as the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, and the same as the new iPad Pro, the user has the uh, possibility to increase or get an, um, increase the size by zooming or go back to a normal size. So for instance, the iPad Pro has um, 1,366 uh, 1, points on the normal uh, display. And if you zoom, you get a regular iPad display with 1,024. So if you designing a solution for an iPad Pro uh, 12 inches, you cannot uh, uh, forbid your user to change in the settings the zoom. So you have to anticipate that and create a layout with the regular iPad uh, size, okay? And at the end, you add a FileMaker object, the FileMaker menu and the FileMaker toolbar that you can activate or not, or not. Every uh, object can change the sizes. And at the end, you have 78 different variations, okay? So it's impossible to design a solution with 78 variations, but we have solutions. So how to deal with so many different sizes? because at the end of the day, I want to work as less as possible. Uh, I don't want to make so many different layouts. So we can focus on some specific problems and we can uh, fix um, the rotation and the number of layouts. So what is not a good approach is to work on FileMaker resizable function. You know, with the inspector, you can resize. This is not a solution. We can, you cannot use that. For simple pattern, for one column pattern on an iPhone, you can expand things, but you all know that you cannot 
expand all the objects on the layout proportionally with, uh, with the resize tool. When you have a complex form, when you have a lot of columns, only one column can be expanded. So on large and complex layout, resizing is not an option. Um, and in the same time, you have to work on that because if you don't work on uh, prepare your layout to uh, be uh, in use in various sizes, uh, everything must be pix uh, pixel perfect. That means any layout you design must be at least as the size of the screen at the end. It could be smaller, but never bigger, even when a pixel, because if the layout opening on the specific screen is bigger from one pixel, when the user swipe it, everything is moving, and it's not a really good user experience. Um, in my opinion, when I design a layout, I want all the content in the screen without scrolling. I know that on some situation, on an iPhone, for example, you can design very long form and scroll. I, for myself, I don't do that, because at any time, you user doesn't see all the information. It doesn't have the feedback or what is missing. Now we have the sliding panel, sliding control panel. It's much more easy to give a feedback to the user. You are at the first, second, or third panel. You have more content to, to discover. So avoid scrolling. And at the end, design fewest, the fewest layouts as possible. So I tried to eliminate some variables. I will try to design my layout smarter, and I will explain. And I will try to build some layouts which can fit different sizes. So first of all, eliminate some variables. What, um, what does it mean? The first question you have to ask to yourself is, is my app universal? Is it iPhone only? or is it iPad only, okay? Some of the apps I did present, uh, some, of, some of these apps are iPhone only, some are universal. So no need to design an iPad uh, layout if your solution is iPhone only. Try to design full screen. This way you get uh, away the FileMaker object, the FileMaker menu and the FileMaker toolbar. You have a little bit more work to do, designing the, your own navigation, but you're pretty sure that you don't have the user activating or not uh, something in your layout. You can, in certain case, uh, cancel rotation. We are all uh, iPhone user or iPad user. I don't know for you, but for instance, my iPhone, most of the time, I use my iPhone in portrait mode. So if I design something on iPhone, I, I, get, uh, I get rid of the landscape mode, and we can do that with a script. Uh, for the iPad, it's a little bit more complicated bit because it's half-half. We use it in landscape or in portrait. You can ask yourself if you design something for iPad Pro, as Apple has designed the iPad Pro, you know that the keyboard is made for landscape usage, the connector you have are for landscape, the size of the device made it for a landscape usage. So in certain circumstances, you can design on iPad Pro only landscape. And once again, you can deal with that with a script. So it's easier for us. And as I said earlier, um, you can fix the slide a problem if you go to the store with Xcode because you have a functionality, a behavior in the Xcode to use a full screen. If you stay in FileMaker Go, you have to deal with that. When it's a matter of sizes, uh, width and height, these two dimensions have, doesn't have, don't have the same impact on the layout. I think it's much more easy to deal with a vertical resizable thing than a horizontal resizing, okay? Let's say different, uh, the first uh, smaller iPhone 
um, share the same width. They only have various eighths. So you can address three iPhone with only one layout because it's much more easy to deal with a vertical resizing than an horizontal resizing. We have plenty of objects in FileMaker like the list, the portals, or the fields to fill the blank, creating from a small screen to a bigger screen. So I can address various vertical eight very easily. It's much more complicated to address the rotation because you have vertical modification and horizontal modification. So I have my technique called slide the block. So basically I embed object, fix object into a panel that stretch. You probably know that when you put an object on a tab panel, let's say a field, a container, a portal, whatever you want, whatever FileMaker object, you can shrink the tab panel and the object is hidden. You can open the tab panel and you show the object, okay? So it's the same tab panel that can shrink vertically or horizontally. And at the end, if the first two methods are not enough, you have to create extra layouts and by a script, a script trigger, you, the on layout side change, you can go from one layer to another if there's a big modification of the display. And as I show you, with the same device, like the iPad mini or the iPad Pro, the same device, the same screen can change. You can have a big change of dimension of display because of split view and slide over. Uh, to be more clear, let's say you have to design for an iPhone app. My advice is starting with a smaller size. So the size of the smaller iPhone, 320 points, and um, a square of 320 to 460, because I have 20 points uh, of vertical um, called margin, uh, I don't know the word in English, sorry. And this part can expand. This is the dark blue part that could expand when you are going from iPhone 4S to 5 or to 6. So you have a fixed content, constant, and you have a variable part. And it could be a list, it could be a portal, it could be a field. The problem we have to fix, it's a desktop publishing problem is not a technical problem. You are, you are in the situation or at a certain point, the size of the element must change. So you have to be smart uh, the way you, sh you shoot the element to change. It could be, maybe it's not a good solution to change the size of the button because from one device to another, the user doesn't understand why on the small iPhone the button is really small and not the big iPhone, the button or the navigation bar is really huge. Probably it, it's better to fill the variable space with a list or a portal because it's much more natural. On a small device, I've got only two rows and on a big iPhone 6, my system, my app displays six rows. It's natural and the, the user don't ask any questions. It's consistent and it's nice. So um, you will have this, exam uh, this example in my file. So basically for, to address all the iPhone with all the variation with the settings, the display settings, uh, without the rotation, because as I said, I do not rotate uh, an iPhone app. I have six different layouts. That means that each time you have to design a screen, you have to do it six times in six different sizes. So this is the minimum. The, um, this is a short explanation about the slide block technique, but if you open the example, you can also go to my website. There's a tutorial, and with the example, I give free video, videos, so it will be 
much more understandable. The basic is, as I said earlier, the way you can put things into a panel. It could be a tab panel or side control panel, whatever. And you can expand it to display things. So the same tab panel can change when you rotate because is with the anchors is uh, straight to the borders, is, um, is on the border. So the border change and the panel adapt. OK. Maybe a little demo. So let's say I take um, this in layout mode. This is what you have. So let me show you in browse mode. I try to reproduce the rotation. I just expanding my window, OK? And when I expand, it's like a rotation from portrait to landscape. A new content area appears. So this is a panel. And there's something that could stretch. OK, I have to undo everything. but. You have to dig into this example to understand how it works. So basically, there's object under other object, object into layers, object that expand, object that moves. In this specific example, the tab panel move to the right. As long as you turn your iPad, the panel move to the right, and the blank space create is filled by the subject, and the subject could be another tab panel with a portal inside. OK? I create a tab panel. I put a large object, maybe 256 points, and I shrink the tab panel to one pixel, and I put it close to my nav bar. And my nav bar is fixed. OK? So I give you 15 different patterns. Most of, the, most of them share the same principle, and few of them have a few little tricks. But everything is open. You have to, to dig a little bit. Do a copy of that, because as long as you move something, it's really hard to understand after where, what was the starting point. But it's really simple, as long as you understand the principle of the panel, adding, and showing things. It's really simple. So the result, when you are comfortable with this technique, you can do pretty much anything with an iPad and an iPhone. You can deal the rotation the way you want. You can choose to add the moving part on the left, on the right, on the bottom, everywhere you want. We have solution for every situation. So in this example, when I rotate, I just expand. It's a portal with the list of my events, the events of the day. This is my application, MobiPharma. OK, I hide the widget, and I display more um, events. This is a, a short um, explanation of the various pattern with the color code I use to show that you can handle any uh, situation. I showed you earlier a short explanation about how I start designing an iPhone layout. This is the same explanation for iPad layout. You all know that iPad dimensions are 768 uh, to 1024. I start building a square uh, body, square content fixed. So 768, 
and 748. 48 only because the iOS bar is 20 points. I have only one solution to deal with the landscape mode as long as I expand the display when I use that on an iPad and I turn from portrait to landscape, I have a new area of 256 points. I can fill it with my technique, slide the block. When you resize vertically, as I said, it's much more easy. You have two solutions, the, my slide the block method, or you can expand with contents. Once again, you can put a list in the middle of the screen. You can put a portal or a big field, a node field, whatever you want, a container. So with this technique, you can mimic responsive uh, behavior, uh, responsive comportment, like this one. So I just, I have this widget twice. The widget is on the right and on the bottom too. It's not the same widget moving. I did the work twice only for the free widget. I can hide objects, I can display more content. And at the end, for a universal app that can handle from iPhone to iPad, at the minimum, you have to design six different layouts. And I give you this file, the template uh, file, with this specific color. So when you try this template on your device, when you rotate and you move the sizes, the color will change because when you have multiple layouts, the thing is I use the a trigger to going from a layout to another when the size changes. So the color helps you understand where you are. You see, when you move the display, the layout is changing. So we, we have solution to deal with the size. Second problem to fix is the design. So remember, if your solution stay on the, for your customer with FileMaker Go, inside FileMaker Go, you can do a pretty much anything you want. If you want to go to the App Store, the, FileMake, the, sorry, the Apple uh, evaluation system can stop your um, your submission if you don't uh, respect the guidelines, if some requirements are not um, in your app, if it's not nice enough, if it's, uh, if it's not working uh, the good way, they can reject your app. I will show you something, this solution. Okay. This solution is something I did for a customer in France. He runs five shops uh, for six to eight million uh, euro business a year. Um, and he wanted something to collect the data every day. Before the solution, the manager of each shop have to send every night uh, data as Excel. Each shop has a FileMaker point of sale, local, and he wanted something in, on the, his iPhone. So I did for him. So I will try to connect to a server in Nice using the hotel Wi-Fi. It will be faster than my local backup because there's a lot of person perform script on server. So we have 15 years of history. Okay, I did a sneak peek of that on my first session. So you open the iPhone anytime you want. 
he has the numbers of the day he wants. And actually, the, the system is deployed only on three shops. I need to deploy on two more shops. We are in Nice, Cannes, Bordeaux, and two shops in Toulouse, if you know France. So you just have to click on the city once, and he has various charts, various numbers, updated at any invoice. He can compare the data, and he has the total with much more charts. OK, you understand the principle. And it can also uh, work on a range on a range of dates. And yet he has the same result plus a few more. OK, and this is running actually in France on a Mac mini server. So this is fast enough. Uh, this is really easy to use. And this is made with FileMaker, of course. The graph are just jQuery, chart.dgs. And so we can basically do whatever we want. And you could have a solution in the palm of your hand. So I go back to So when I design, um, not only for iOS, but also for desktop, I try to make things as not only nice as possible, but really user friendly. You have to un understand an interface really quick. So with this kind of accordion. Behind that, this layout is only tab panel. This is buttons. I'm going from one tab panel to another. This is really simple, OK? So you have to work on nice UI, best graphic design as possible. We are using touching devices. So we, are, we have to deal with swiping, touching, double touch. Uh, it's important. Most of the user now are used to this kind of navigation of interaction. So you have to embed your solution with this. Uh, interaction. That's why I presented last year. You could do so many things with the slide panel. You can trigger any action you want with free slide panel. Um, when you design a, lay a layout for iOS, you have to learn new behavior. Designing for mouse and cursor is really different than designing for finger. Um, everything has to be bigger. You have to create se space between elements. You don't want your user d delete uh, by accident an important record because the delete button is close to the add button. You have to think of that. The best thing to do is to use your own uh, solution, your own development. So when you read the guidelines, you have a uh, minimum size required. So start with that. You use the gesture as much as you can. Uh, the swipe, when I slide, I move the slide, you see the, the sliding effect. Uh, that's I call advanced integ integration of the slide control panel. So we have, with FileMaker, we don't have all the uh, library of the gesture made by iOS, but you have, we have enough to do a, a great job. Uh, last point I want to mention, there's many potential errors a user can do using a touching device. Uh, you probably has, have experienced a calling you didn't expect. You, you send a call because your iPhone touch your skin or your pants. Uh, just imagine you have a complex solution on iPad, and by accident, your user touch something, erase something. You, you can prevent that. Uh, what I did on my solution, um, I have a, 
a form, for instance, the user cannot edit directly the form. This is only for reading, for browsing. When I, when I did the presentation of Mobi Pharma, I said to you, I touch my screen and nothing happens because my user have to do a specific interaction to enter an edit mode. So I use the gesture tap with twice tap or one tap and a few fingers. I, I trigger an edit mode or I trigger a search mode. And with that, it delete only if it uh, follow a specific process. So it, that gives to your user confidence in your solution. Okay, even if he touch by mistake, nothing happens. Because you are dealing with something we have in our hand, things about putting important control at the bottom. Um, this slide is called UI, UI, and UI again, because that's the surface that the user sees. So this is really important and much more important if you want to go to the Apple Store, where uh, great UI are really important. So start by sketching. Sketching helps you to brainstorm ideas, to collect the content, to define user flows. So it's an important first step. You have to optimize the UI for the device. As I said, for the interaction, everything must be have to be bigger, but the text have to be bigger too. Don't try to put all the content on the same layout. Uh, we all have customers asking, I want all the thing in the layout, but it's an iPhone. I don't care, I want everything in the layout. So we have solution with slide panel, with popover, with multiple layouts. So work this way. Use negative space to create areas or to create separation, not only to avoid error, but to um, improve usability and uh, reading. Work on the aesthetic of your design. So this is the way that uh, the user perceive your work. And if you go to the Apple Store, you have to work also on your icons. You have to make icons uh, a regular uh, custom file maker, custom developer, never care about an icon. But I will explain at the end, uh, the App Store requires new assets and a lot of assets. So you have to work a lot. Probably you have to uh, work with third part software like Photoshop or SketchUp on Mac. Uh, graphic tools. Um, you have to really care about, I was talking about the graphic and the buttons all earlier. What is affordance is the way we, we I, I use a lot of icons in my, in my solution, but sometimes I, icons are for buttons and other time only for illustrate uh, labels. So, if you are working like me, you have to take really care of the way you display uh, this, this kind of element. For instance, a button must, must look like a button. And if you use a lot of illustration in your design, it's really important that the user at the first sight recognize a button and just an illustration, okay? And you have probably heard about visual hierarchy. This is a good way to focus on the main element on small screen. Work on your, the consistency of your design. My navigation bar is always at the same place, same size, same color. My elements have the same look. This is important. The right pattern for the right device. So the best example for me is Apple Mail. If you look at Apple Mail on iPhone, Apple Mail on iPad, and Apple Mail on Mac, you see on iPhone, I have a list of uh, letterbox. You say that in English? What a letter? Uh, let mailbox, yeah, mailbox. You have the list of the mailbox. 
mailboxes. In the mailbox, you click on the mailboxes, you have another list of uh, the emails, and you are, you are going from one step to another. This is the, the way to do an iPhone kind of model. You focus on one problem at a time. On iPad or iPad Pro, you have a bigger screen, so you can design patterns more, more, much more like desktop. But on iPhone, it's really, a, it's really a lot of work to divide the content. So as I said, on, on really big screen, you can uh, make use of a uh, bigger screen to deliver the same experience as a, a desktop. You can uh, design more complex uh, layouts. And as I said earlier, um, I made a distinction between a FileMaker solution I designed for FileMaker Go, it's still a solution, and a FileMaker solution I designed to be an app. And to illustrate that, uh, I'm starting from a starter solution, the contact solution. I, I fill the starter solution with my information, and I change just a few uh, things to explain what I mean. I use more merge field than uh, fields. I use slider buttons, just illustration, and a bunch of scripts instead of checkbox. And I get rid of all what could look like too much to FileMaker, the navigation bar, the menu bar, the toolbar. And instead of the toolbar, I create my own button. And if you read the guidelines for FileMaker SDK, if I remember well, FileMaker told you just don't use the toolbar and the navbar, OK? So as always, uh, this is the same uh, design basic principle. Pay attention to details, navigation, typography, clarity. So I don't spend time on that. And about the design point, I like uh, what Marisa Mayer, uh, Yahoo CEO, said. Um, she asked the design team to follow three rules. The first one is the two-tap rules. When you, are from, when you are going from point A to point B, no more than two taps. If there's more than two taps, you have to redesign. She has the three-point rules, and I really like this one. You have to count a point for any different font, any different font size, or any different colon. If you are more than five, you have to redesign. That means keep only one font, one size, maybe two. One smaller size for the label and one regular size for the fields. Don't play with many fonts. It's, I, I will say, ugly. Uh, but still, it's not nice. It's too many information. Don't put too many color if you don't uh, master well a palette. So keep the things simple. And the last rule is the 98% rules. She said a product should be designed for the way it will be used 98% of the time. And she gave the example of the Xerox machine. A Xerox machine can now do many, many things. But the main functionality is to copy. And that's why the button to copy is a big green one in the middle. Okay? It's really easy to use, and you go for the uh, usage you need the most. So design your solution this way. Uh, think that you are designing for many different users, many different devices, and it's worse when you are going to the App Store. When you design for yourself or for your customer, you know your customer, you know their devices. When you address the App Store, you have, I expect for you, thousands, billions of uh, users. You cannot uh, connect all of them and know all the problems and all the problems and all the devices. So you have to anticipate these potential issues. You have to test a lot. If uh, you are on the Xcode yet, uh, you know you could use simulator. But you have to know that testing something on simulator, testing your app on the Xcode simulator is not enough. Sometimes simulator don't show you specific bugs. When I have, in France, 
uh, working on my first app called GoTip. I, in the same time, I have a friend, uh, Sébastien Saint-Jean, the guy who delivers for you Addendum. Addendum, maybe you, you know this app. It's basically is the knowledge, the file maker knowledge base into a solution you could use every day on your iPhone. You can download Addendum for free on the App Store. And at the beginning of the year, we were all working on our uh, solution. And he called me because on his device, he has an iPad mini. He was testing the solution, and he has a kind of specific bug. One uh, from layout to another, he has a kind of white flash, annoy annoying. Was not a crash, but an annoying white flash. Simulator, nothing. I try it on my devices, and I have no bug at all. And because we don't have the same devices, I have new devices, we figure that it was because his CPU, it was an iPad 2, was too slow for the, the charge, OK? So just to say that on simulator, with the, simula the Xcode simulator, you can test on any device. But it's not real devices. So the uh, simulator doesn't react as real devices. So if you are going on the Apple Store and you intend to address a lot of people, you have to test on real devices, OK? Um, I don't know if Christine is in the room. Yeah, she is here. Before the, app, the iOS SDK, if you are a file maker developer, the only way to go to the App Store, and if you don't develop an Xcode or Swift, the only way to go to the App Store is to be a singer. And we have in the room Christine from Sweden, who, uh, who is on the, on the iTunes store. Yes, you can stand up. <laughs> <laughs> and she was on the iTunes store a long time ago. And if she delivers a solution for the App Store, she could be one of the few who has something, who has a song and an app. So since January, as a FileMaker developer, we can have our product on the App Store a really quick way. As I said, the last solution I proposed uh, was accepted in two days only. So my first test was, as I said, GoTip. For many years, I'm only a FileMaker developer. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know nothing to the process of the App Store. So I took my Apple developer subscription. I learned on Google how the things are working. And I changed a few things in my habits. The, I, I did this app to learn the process. So I, work, I have work on my uh, versioning log. It's, it's really important when you're going to the App Store to, to track your version. I have to modify some habits for the main thing when you, are, when you have a solution, a FileMaker solution from FileMaker Go to the App Store. You have to remember that you never kill um, an application on an iPhone. So for instance, your solution starts only once. So if you have a bunch of scripts running on the startup script that doesn't work on an iPhone, that's worked the first time, but doesn't work anymore, the, the app is a kind of a sleep. So if you have a, a lot of script running on a startup and you need the thing running uh, multiple times, you have to move the scripts to a kind of unenter script, OK? Or a um, time trigger script. The best thing is on, I have certain layouts. I'm pretty sure my user use this layout multiple times a day, and I, I have a script trigger on the page, because the starter script, script run, runs only one time. And no need of a quit button anymore. Most of my uh, FileMaker solution for Go has a quit button. But you don't quit. Um, you don't need a quit button. You just swipe up to, to clear off the, the app. Okay, so the first 
uh, test, I learned a lot, a lot with this uh, test. With the second um, app, the grid system, I wanted to test because it's the pay app. I wanted to test the payment process and the marketing uh, process. And I also wanted to test the updating protest, uh, process of uh, user data. And there are solutions. You can deliver a, a, uh, an app on the App Store where, in case of an update, you can track the previous record and save the previous record for your user. I, I have no time here to explain the whole process. It's pretty simple. I will give you a link. But basically, you have to understand that when you create an app from a FileMaker solution in Xcode, the FileMaker SDK creates a template, template of a project with a folder. You give the name to this project. It will be the name of your app re, um, linked to a certificate. And you can put anything you want in this folder. The solution can have a different name. For instance, my solution is called Grid System, it's the official iTunes name, but the FileMaker file could be grid system 001, grid system 002. So you can have a versioning, you can track this, and you have a config file, it's a text, and in the config file you can um, instruct the app uh, to do specific things in case of updating. You can say to the, to the system, to the app, if there's an update, you can erase the previous file, or you can add this file to the other previous file. And with this behavior, you have the uh, possibility, availability, to push the first app. And when you want to push an update, as long as the update has another name, you can add the second uh, file to the first one and to run a script, because with Xcode you can create your own URL schema. And this way, as long as you have the right script in the, all your versions, you have to, to think about that early on, you can open the file, track all the records, import all the records, and you can erase the previous file with the old way. You, you have to export an empty fan set with the a right name and you can erase a thing. So the process is, I'm the user, I download the app. Few months later, there's an update and I've, during this time I have worked, I've created records. I download the update, system runs, it finds there's two files in the same folder. Okay, there's two files. I run the script, I collect all the records, I import the records, and I erase the previous and you have a solution updated. So it works, but I'm not sure at 100% it's accurate because a lot of things could happen. I don't have enough history. Uh, for instance, you can have a call. You can have a notification. The iPhone can go to sleep mode during the script. So I, I tried to test. All the tests are good for now. But on a microsecond, uh, the test could be different with a phone call or something like that. So it works. You can try it. Um, there's, a no there's an update with FileMaker 15. You can manipulate the file to go to the iCloud, to go to Dropbox, to bring the file back. It's a new way to give a safe system to the user. So with a good safe system plus an auto update, we can have a solution to uh, prevent user data because at the end of the day, uh, user data are really too important to play with and to take risk. But we have solution, but so new. Also, when you are going to the App Store, as I said earlier, you have to provide a lot of assets, a lot of graphic materials, icons, screenshot, launch image, so if you don't have the graphics tool, you, you need someone to do this work for you in multiple 
sizes because of retina and non-retina displays. So this is a bunch of extra work. About the importing thing, I, I came from the work of a uh, uh, named Jedrus Godelaitis. Um, he no, he's a filemaker developer. He has a solution called Benroy Business App. He runs blogs. Uh, he's very active on the filemaker community. So he find this way to update solution because he starts developing this solution. update is FileMaker Pro solution. And with few works, he find that the system could work on iOS 2. So start with uh, the, his work. If you are interested by doing this, read carefully the blog. I didn't do that, so I lose a lot of time because a lot of information is hard coded. So you need to create your own URL, URL schema. Uh, in its code, it's really easy. And after everything works so far. Uh, so you have to anticipate if you want to the App Store and to implement an auto update, you, are, you have to anticipate all the script because all the script must exist since version one. Oh. It works, but be careful. I think everyone say that. I, I heard that Todd Geist did a presentation, and at the end he said, oh, take care. Uh, everything is new, so don't try to probably uh, publish a big CRM or a big invoicing with, after one year, hundreds of, of data, and at the first update, your user lose every data. This could be bad. Could be bad. So take care. So this is. Um, I'm close to the end. So about the design part, the main problem are the multiple size. I show you way to, uh, to find solution. You can deal with rotation too. You have to work on the UI. Uh, with FileMaker, we can develop really a quick way. We can go now on the App Store really fast in two days. So we have time again to work on the design and to test a lot. So I encourage you to, for yourself in the first time to, to build a solution and going to the App Store. And for your customer, you can use uh, SDK for MDM and a little bit more secure. So I have updated this slide because this version is a 0.2. It's, I updated everything at 12, so you can download it. There's a, a plenty of example too. And this is the end of my session. And thank you, and I'm waiting for a question. <laughs>